Okay, guys, it's April 11th, which means something extremely simple. It is a new war bond day for Democratic Detonation. So we're going to go through it and show you guys exactly what you guys can get your hands on if you utilize this war bond. I'm bloody excited, to say the least. On top of that, we've got some, uh, some interesting inputs from the community with regards to slinging your stratagem further. And we're going to talk about how the devs were actually right about their moves inside of the balancing patches that you guys were so angry about just a matter of weeks ago next up we've taken a step back from the first war i don't really understand this but we're going to take a look into it all the same if you haven't already smash that beautiful blue thumbs up and subscribe with post notifications turned on it'd be greatly appreciated on top of that check out our sponsor for today's video control freak the number one in controller gaming aiming that's right we made it rhyme but not only that we're utilizing a code cloud plays at checkout if you go down to the link in the description it will get you 12% off. And yes, it's much better than 10. We're aware. Anywho, let's dive on into today's video. So right here, we can see the release of Democratic Detonation for a mere 1,000 super credits, which if you take a look at how much that's going to cost you, it is eight Great British Pounds. Nice and cheap. It's not that bad for a war bond. We are going to go ahead and unlock this premium war bond right now. And we're going to purchase. I can't wait to see what we've got in here. So naturally, we have got the weapon of choice, which is only 20 medals. I'm a little bit confused by that, but that bad boy is going on. We've also got the thermite grenade, although I've not seen great things about that one either. We're going to make moves into the armor sets as per always. But it's not the red one to begin with, which is disappointing. We have 10 more to move on to the next page. So naturally, I'm probably going to grab the cape for this one and the back piece. Nice and simple. All equipped. Armor set is attached and it looks pretty damn dope, to be completely honest. This one looks quite nice. This is the medium set armor. And then we have the weapon in told. So we'll go back in and see what else we've got going. Going on to page two, though, we have got this right here, which is obviously going to be Cloud's renowned usage. We're going to take a look at the statistics on this one because this one is going to be an interesting one. Of, uh, huh. Okay. That one's a little bit confusing. I was kind of expecting a little bit better from that one. We're going to take a look at that in comparison to the best armor in the game right now because realistically the best one that you guys could be rocking is this one here which is the light gunner which is 100 550 and 125 when we make comparison on that one this one is not all that great which is extremely disappointing although it does have the further reduces recoil when crouching and the, the initial holding capacity of two plus grenades i'm a little confused by that little confused by it but nonetheless we are going to keep going on all the same when we take a look into here we are going to go ahead and purchase the next weapon which is the eruptor it looks quite cool nonetheless we've got to get it anyway and this right here is the expert extraction pilot where it lowers the time it takes to get the extraction shuttle to reach the extraction beacon this is going to be utilized a lot like a lot People are going to be using that one so much more. We have got this right here, which is the Devastator Heavy Armor Set, which just looks like an absolute tanky mother trucker. This isn't an expensive war bond. You can complete this one quite bloody quickly with 200 medals. We've got through probably the, the, the bulk of the things right here. And even then, this last armor set, it's not that expensive. At 64 and 48 with 30 and 80 for the exploding crossbow. I was expecting a lot more of an expensive run through for this. It's not too shabby. I genuinely can't complain about this one at all. I think that they've done a really, really good job of it. You guys can go ahead and grab this for very, very little at eight pounds and then dive on in and get all democratic and that. We're going to put on the red armor real quick before we move on to the rest of the video because. Well, naturally, Cloud's been waiting for a decent set of black and red armor and has wanted a red bloody cape for all time. Although it's not really red, is it? The cape isn't really red. Although it works for now. It'll do. It'll do. Moving on to the rest of the video. 
We have got some interesting stuff coming from you guys over on Reddit, which makes me chuckle just a little bit. But we have got this right here. 17.2 thousand upvotes saying, hear me out. As we begin to engage larger and more dangerous threats without the galaxy, the ability of our arms to manifest our destiny is distances requires diminishes. Unacceptable. The solution is simple and cheap. It increases the range of democracy. I'd buy it if it were available. The perfection combination of that good old spirit of democratic ingenuity and modern technology. I absolutely love this. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's a dog toy, but it would sling these stratagems so bloody far. It's unbelievable. And moving on to another one, which actually I am kind of glad to hear about. This one is 11.5 thousand upvotes, and it talks about how the devs were right all along. This one is an interesting one and is going to have some people's backs turned. So if you want to guys want to have the conversations down in the comment section, it is definitely the right time to. But before we get into it, we are going to be giving away three of these war bonds. Very simply, if you guys want to get involved with this, all you have to do is head down to the comment section. And I want a black and a red heart. Heart. Why? Because Cloud finally got his black and red armor. So put a black heart and a red heart in the comment section. It'll enter you in. We're going to give away three of these war bonds down in the, the comment section. We are going to be giving this away and announcing the winners on the community page and in the giveaway section of the Discord in the description. It's now a, got a whole section for it. So you guys can go down there, join the 10,500 people involved and get in for that giveaway. A black heart and a red heart in the comment section below. Let's dive on into what they've said about the devs being right. So they stayed right here. So I know there was a bunch of controversy about the railgun nerf, what feels like forever ago, but man, things have been awesome. In the early days, I was the only guy packing expandable anti-tank and anti-material rifle for bugs or bots. It's so refreshing, even on these subs, to see people talking about how awesome the autocannon is or how much they love the AMR. And even these days, I see people talking about the HMD and the grenade launcher plus supply pack. I used it to load into a game. All four members of the team had a shield, railgun, and two stratagems of their choice every single time. And here we are now. I load in. I see Quasar, Autocannon, Stalwart, EAT, HMG, Grenade Launcher, a variety of backpacks or no backpack at all. And not to mention, they're all viable. I even see the railgun from time to time. It's been a joy. Thanks, Arrowhead. Now, there is an edit to this one that states, to everyone who is pointing out that you see the Quasar and Shield most often now, you are right. It is almost certainly the most common setup currently. That being said, in any game, there's going to be things a majority of players prefer. In Smash Melee, Fox and Falco are the best characters, but people still play Falcon and Marth and blah, 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 blah. Essentially, what he's trying to get at is there is always going to be more of a preferable usage inside of every game and Helldivers is not going to be any different but it's nice to see that it's not all the same and there's not such a meta loadout now as to what it was beforehand and the devs said that we would perfect it and they definitely have and now we've got so many different usages that we can use inside of the game so for me massive well done the railgun nerf was well worth it and our final topic of conversation, since the world war that we had in the Galactic War for Helldivers 1, we've actually gone backwards. I was not a Helldivers 1 player, although when we take a look at what it is that they actually utilized back there, they had a mech that was able to shoot stratagems from inside the mech. Now, I wonder why did Super Earth think it was necessary to remove the stratagem launcher? I actually have no idea. This is a little bit baffling because this is technology going backwards. I think it's such a pain in the rear end having to jump out of the mech to shoot off a stratagem for reinforcement or for an added extra bonus usage. This is, needs to be added back in. Arrowhead, I want to see this little stratagem launcher back on the shoulder of my mech, please. Please? Anywho, that's unfortunately all we've got time for today. If you haven't already, smash the beautiful blue thumbs up and subscribe with post notifications turned on. Thank you so much again for watching, guys. Appreciate your faces. Like, subscribe, and as always, I'll see you in the clouds.